This demonstration we're going to look at configuring network access protection. The purpose of network access protection is to ensure that non-compliant clients can't connect to my network or if they can connect to my network they're connected to a quarantine network which will allow them to then be configured in order to make them compliant. So the first thing we need to do here is we just need to install the network policy server. So what we'll do here is we'll add rules and features, select our next button, select rule based or feature based installation then what we'll do is select the server we wish to install the MPS onto and select next. Go for our server rules and go for network policy and access control. Then what we'll do is we'll add the admin features, select our next button, won't bother with any additional features and select next. Just in the network policy and access, we'll quickly read through the summary page here and select next. Ensure that we have network policy server enabled and select next again. Then what we'll do is we'll select install and we'll allow the role to install. So at this point here, we'll just quickly pause this demonstration. We don't want to watch the bar move across the screen and we'll return back once the installation is complete. Right, so the MPS server is now installed, so we'll just close down the installation, go to Tools, and what we'll do here is we'll just go for Network Policy Server. Then what we'll go is we'll go for Network Access Protection, expand up Network Access Protection, expand up our System Health Validator, and expand up our Windows Security Health. Then what we're going to do here is go for settings. We're just going to go for the default configuration and just see what this provides. So what we're seeing here is we're going to check the policies or we're going to check the settings on our Windows devices. If these tick boxes that are turned on don't comply, then the machine is non-compliant. So what we're checking for here is, is the firewall enabled for all network connections? Is antivirus installed? Is spyware protection installed? Or automatic updates enabled? Now all we're going to do purely for purposes of this demo is we're just going to get it to verify that the Windows firewall is indeed turned on. So we're not going to bother with any of the other tick boxes. Once we've done all of that, we'll just select OK. And we've now configured our default policy. Next thing to do now is specify our health policies. So if we come to our policies tab, all we're going to do on our policies tab here, just ignore that. And what we're going to do here is we're going to come down to health policies. So under health policies, the next thing to do here is create some new policies. So the first one we're going to create here is one for compliant machines. So I'm going to call it compliant. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to verify that we have client passes all of these checks. So yep, everything is compliant if we pass all of our system health validator checks. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use our default Windows Security Health Validator. So we'll select OK. We we'll also want to create one as well for non-compliant machines, so we'll select New, again under Health Policy here, this one we'll call Non-Compliant. And what we want to do with the non-compliant is just on our client SHV checks is we just want to go that client fails one or more health checks. Again we'll just enable our default Windows Security Health Validator and select OK. So now we have our two health policies. Next thing to do is specify some network policies. So with our network policies here, again, we're going to have compliant and non-compliant. What we want to do with these network policies is just ensure that compliant computers have full access, non-compliant computers get limited access. So what we're going to do to start with is we're just going to disable the default ones. Don't need them. We're going to create our own. Then what we're going to do is right click, click on new, and then we want to create first off our compliant computer policy. So I'm going to call this one Compliant Full Access, select my Next button. What we want to do here is add some conditions. So we'll click on Add. And what we want to look for here under Conditions is we just want to have a look for Health Policies and select Add. We want to use our Compliant Policy and select OK. And then we'll select our Next button. Access Permission, yep, Access will be granted. They are compliant, so we'll select Next. Then what we're going to do here is we're not going to bother with any authentication methods, but we are going to perform machine health check only and select next. Not going to bother with any constraints, so we'll select next again. And then what we want to do with NAP enforcement at this point here is we want to allow full network access. So those are the settings we've got. So we've got full network access, allow full network access for a limited time and allow limited access. Then what we've got down at the bottom here, if we're not compliant, we will or not enable auto remediation. Well, I'm compliant, I've got full access, we'll just leave the ticks. Once we've done all that, select finish, 
And now what we need to do is just create a network policy for non-compliant machines. I'm going to call this one non-compliant restricted, so we'll select next. Again, we'll add some conditions. Condition we want to add again is just health validator. So under health policies, select add. What we'll do at this point here is we'll go for non-compliant machines, select OK, select our next button. We will allow access, but we're going to allow limited access, so we'll select next. Again, we'll turn off the authentication and just perform machine health check only and select next. Then what we'll do here, won't bother with any constraints, so we'll select next. NAP enforcement, what we'll do is we'll go for limited access, but what I don't want to happen, just for purpose of this demo, is I don't want to enable auto remediation. So this point here, we'll select next again. Then what we'll do, is select finish, and we've now created our non-compliant restricted. Now we've done all of this, what we want to do is we just want to then set up our client, set up our servers fully, and then continue on with our NAP configuration. So I'm fairly happy I've done everything on the server, so we'll just minimize down the server. Next thing I need to do here is just configure DHCP so that we can set up some settings if we have non-compliant machines. So all we're going to do here, we're just going to come into our DHCP server, we're just going to come for IP version 4, go for our scope of datum, and what we want to do here is just right click, go to our properties, and what we want to do here is just in the network access protection is we want to enable this. So we'll enable network access protection settings for this scope. We'll select OK and then we want to set up some policies. So we'll right click, we'll go for a new policy and what we want to do with this policy here is we're just going to call this one NAP policy. And then what we'll do here is we'll select next. What we want to do is add some conditions. So all we'll do at this point here is we'll just select add. Under the criteria we're going to go for user class for the operator, we're going to go for equals, and under the value here, we just want to go for default network access protection class. And at this point here, we'll select add. Select OK. And then what we'll do is select next. Then what we've got here is configure settings in this policy for how are we going to configure an IP address range for this policy. What I'm going to say at this point here is don't configure purely an IP address range for this policy. And we'll select our next button. But what we will do is we will configure some basic settings. First thing we're going to do here is for any non-compliant machines, we'll go for the DNS servers here and we'll just specify our DNS server. I'm going to specify that as 172.16.0.10 and we'll add that in. What we'll also do here as well is we'll go for option 15 and just specify our DNS domain name as well. And we'll set that to restricted.adatum.com and then we'll select our next button and then we'll select our finish button. So now we've set up our NAP policy. Now we've done all of this, the next thing to do is actually configure our client. So we'll just move over to our client machine. I've just launched up a command prompt on my client machine. I'm just gonna run Microsoft Management Console. And what we want to do here is set this up for our network access protection. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna add a snap in. And the snap in we're gonna add in here is our network access protection client configuration. We're going to do that for our local machine, so we'll select OK, select OK again, and then what we'll do is we'll come into the NAP client configuration, and what we want to do here is we just want to go for our enforcement clients. And what we want to do here is DHCP quarantine client enforcement, we'll just enable this. So now we've done that, we'll just come out of the Microsoft Management Console, not going to bother saving any changes and all we'll do now is we'll just launch up the services and we want to enable our network access protection agent so we'll just scroll this down a little bit and what we're looking for here is our network access protection agent which is currently stopped so we'll go to properties we set this to automatic then what we'll do is we'll start up the service and then we'll select ok So what we've now done is we've now configured our client machine to use network access protection. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thanks very much.